Bristol Myers, makers of Ipana toothpaste for the smile of beauty and Vitalis for well-groomed hair, bring you Duffy's Tavern, starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. <laughs> Hello, Duffy's Tavern. Where do you eat meat to eat? Archie, the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Ah, oh, Duffy, I'm as happy as a bee with the hives. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm getting married. Yep, to a very high-class society dame. I, I got in touch with her through the Lonely Hearts Club and the Police Gazette. <laughs> yes, I was intrigued by their slogan. It said, uh, every client comes back and thanks us. The girls ain't pretty, but they're awful anxious. <laughs> well, uh, I've been corresponding uh, with the Dame Duffy, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to marry, you know? Sounds terrific. Huh? When you married Mrs. Duffy, she was terrific, too? Young and cute and Irish as Patty's pig, huh? Now, after 30 years, you wish you'd married the pig. <laughs> well, at what point did she start to change? The minute you carried her over the threshold, huh? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, just a second. How'd you ever carry a fat dame like that over the threshold? Two trips. <laughs> well, Duffy, I'm glad to see that you still got a sense of humor about the sweet old fat slob. <laughs> well, I'll call you back. I got a lot of things on my mind. Eddie, uh, uh, yes, yeah, Mr. Uh... Eddie, uh, when a guy's getting married and he starts walking down the aisle, uh, which foot does he start with the... The left or the right? Left or right, he's still off on the wrong foot. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm uh, thinking of committing matrimony, you know. Oh, Mazel Tov. <laughs> <laughs> Might I ask you uh, who the lady in question is? Well, the questionable lady uh, <coughs> happens to be uh, Miss uh, Millicent Van Schnook. Mm. What does this schnook look like? Eddie, it's Van Schnook And she's beautiful, she says Where'd you meet this Schnook? Van Schnook I'm sorry, Van Schnook Well, I ain't met her yet As I say, the, the wedding is being handled through the mails uh, What won't Sears and Roebuck think of now? <laughs> you, you say you fell in love with this gal by mail? Yeah, funny thing how it happened, Eddie it all began... With a mere penny postcard. But before the week was out, we was mailing hot special deliveries. <laughs> yeah, with the stamps upside down. You should have seen them last couple of letters. Flaming. I told her how she kindled me spark of love and how me embers was burning for her. <clears throat> then I filled up the rest of the page with X's. You mad. Passionate thing, you. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll soon be married. It'll be wonderful, you know. Get out of that lonely furnished room, have a real home, two wash rags instead of one, two teeth brush, two towels, two rings around the bathtub. You're really happy, huh? Yes, yeah, sure am. I've always wanted a family, and... Who knows, I might uh, have some little ones someday that would turn their sweet cherubic faces up to me and, and say, uh, Hello, what? Hello, <laughs> oh, again, uh, Eddie, remind me to get in touch with Margaret Sangster, will you? Uh, guess what, Finnegan, I'm getting married. That's nice. What else is new? Maybe you didn't hear me right. I'm getting married. M-A-R-R-E-D. <laughs> marriage? Ah, oh, that's stupid. Why? What's wrong with marriage? Well, it's all right for people with children. <laughs> Personally, I, I think it takes the fun out of being a bachelor. Finnegan, you are exactly what you look like. Who's a moron? <laughs> you. Oh, I'm a moron. Who's the guy that's getting married? Look, people got to get married. Our whole way of life is based on it. Why? Well, because men are men and women are women. 
Well, I grant it's a novel arrangement, but I don't see the point. <laughs> All right, let me put it this way. Yeah. Uh, your father and mother, they was married, right? I'll go along with that. <laughs> okay. Now, if your father and mother hadn't gotten married, where would you be today? Up at the ball game. <laughs> Hey, you see what I'm driving at? Well, do you? Let me put it this way. No. <laughs> well, look, I'm merely trying to explain. You see, the fact that your parents hit the jerk pot, uh, <laughs> this has nothing to do with it. Uh, human life, uh, Finnegan, is deeper than that. Now, take Freud, for instance. He says mankind falls in love for interior motives. But Freud can be wrong. All right. Would you mind if I ask you a question? What? What are we talking about? <laughs> we are talking about love and marriage. The, you mean that stuff about the birds and the bees? Yeah. Mere propaganda. <laughs> the birds and the bees? Why, sure. The last week, I took a bee, and I put it in the bird's cage, and... Yeah? Frankly, Arch, nothing has happened. <laughs> I still fail to see whether it has anything to do with something. Uh, however, I won't argue the point. Well, uh, I just... Uh... You're certainly in a talkative mood tonight, Arch. Well, why not, Joe? When a guy's planning to marry a dame like this Millicent, he wants to shout it out to the whole world. Same with me. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Every week I like to tell the whole world about Ipana Toothpaste. Uh, well, some guys like dames, some guys like toothpaste. <laughs> Personally, I'm a guy that likes dames, you know. Uh, when I give them a little squeeze, I don't have to worry about getting the brush. <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Arch. I like girls, too, but I like them to have a lovely smile. And that's why I like to tell everyone about Ipana. For Ipana helps you to the prettiest, most sparkling smile you ever had. You know, dentists like Ipana so much that it's the toothpaste more of them use themselves as well as recommend to their patients than any other. You ought to try the Ipana way to a pretty smile yourself. Because dentists say the Ipana way works. And it's easy. First, between regular visits to your dentist, brush all tooth surfaces with Ipana toothpaste at least twice a day. Then massage gums the way your dentist advises to stimulate gum circulation. Then see the difference Ipana toothpaste can make to your teeth, to your smile. Get a tube of Ipana first chance you get. Remember, a good dentifrice, like a good dentist, is never a luxury. So make the Ipana way your way to healthier gums, brighter teeth, a more sparkling smile. The Ipana smile, the smile of beauty. Hey, Eddie. Yeah? Eddie, uh, see what you think of this wedding invitation, huh? Wedding invitation? Yeah, I just wrote it out. Hmm, let's see. I, Archie, hereby announce his engagement to the former Miss Van Schnook, Nee Millicent. <laughs> the bride and groom hereby request your presence. Uh, presidents. No, no, no. Try it again, son. President. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, we are only on that tape. <laughs> uh, see this week, sneaky way, our sneaky way is I underline the word presence. Continue, Eddie. Okay. <laughs> Those will be optional, but we prefer black tie. Clothes will be optional. Well, that's... Uh, <laughs> Don't apply to the ladies, of course. Uh, might be a little gaudy. <clears throat> Continue, Eddie. Obscene language will not be tolerated, as ceremony will be civil. <laughs> Signed, Cobina Wright. Cobina Wright? Gives it a little touch of class. You know? <laughs> Boy, it's going to be a big night for Third Avenue, all right? Say, Archie, I hear you getting married. Yeah. Oh, well, may I propose a toast? Oh, thank you, Miss Duffy. What's the toast? Uh... There's nothing so sweet as a wedding in June. Here's to the bride and here's to the goon. 
<laughs> oh, you're bitter, huh? Just mad because you're still on the shelf. Oh, yeah. I could have got off the shelf plenty of times. Enumerate the opportunities. <laughs> Who? Well, for one, Ernest Diefendorfer. For two, Breckenbridge Hartsenfelder. And for three, Harold Harper Road. How did she ever miss Adolf Schickel, Grover? <laughs> These guys all wanted to marry you? They certainly did. In fact, Harold Harker Road turned to drink when I refused to marry him. Naturally, a thing like that calls for a celebration. <laughs> but if you had all these proposals, how come your old man has a standing offer of two white shirts to any guy that'll go out with you? And he'll even shorten the sleeves. <laughs> Archie, that's a lie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It was Mama that said she'd shorten the sleeve. <laughs> Besides, you're somebody to talk. I'd like to see what's marrying you. What's marrying me happens to be a very beautiful society, Dame, from a family with yachts and swimming pools and packet cars. And I'm gonna be the man that owns one. Oh, just marrying her for her father's money, huh? Who's marrying her for father's money? I'd marry her no matter whose money it was. <laughs> And I resent the inference that I'm a piccolo. <laughs> uh, say, Art, uh, by the way, did you get the wedding ring yet? Oh, oh, yeah, thanks for reminding me. Give me that phone. Hello? Tiffany and Schwartz? <laughs> uh, genuine department, please. <laughs> Hello? Genuine, Mr. Tiffany, <clears throat> this is Archie of Duffy's Tavern. Uh, I'm thinking about getting married. And thank you. Uh, tell me, tell me, Mr. Tiffany, what have you got in a diamond wedding ring? Something with a nice large floor. Huh? How many carrots? Uh, oh, I know about thirty or forty. Hmm? How much? Hmm. Let me talk to Schwartz. <laughs> Oh, uh, Schwartz? Uh, what have you got in a nice diamond ring? Oh, up to about five bucks. Huh? You'll let me know as soon as the glass blower comes back from lunch? Okay, Schwartz, I'll wait for your call. George, five bucks for a wedding ring? So what? I make that kind of dough in a couple of days. <laughs> Besides, this is one marriage I want to get started right. You see, Finnegan, a woman is a peculiar thing. You've got to approach her tenderly, like a delicate flower, or else love is apt to wane out the window. Yeah. But how did you ever learn so much about love? Just observation. You see, before I worked at Duffy's, I used to be flashlight man in a drive-in movie. <laughs> Well, uh, gee, you certainly learned a lot. Well, thanks. Good evening, Archie, me boy. Well, Clancy the Comp. Then mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. to you. Thanks. In the back of me hand to you, sir. Uh, Eddie, some bourbon. Uh, three fingers for the long arm. <laughs> uh, thank you, Archie. I could use a pick-me-up. You know, we had our annual policeman's ball last night. Oh, I feel terrible. Well, wine, women, and song, huh? Yes, but not necessarily in that order. Uh, it's too bad you weren't there, Archie. No, Clancy, my days is over as a spinster. Uh, I gotta settle down now that I'm getting married. You? Taking the leap? Mm -hmm. I thought you always played hard to get. I did, but I found if you play too hard to get, you don't get cut. <laughs> well, I, I certainly hope you found the right girl, Archie. You know, choosing a wife is a serious business. When you embark on the sea of matrimony, make sure you don't do what I did and get a leaky boat. <laughs> you never know what kind of a woman you get until after you marry her. Yeah, it's like taking a poke at a pig, ain't it? <laughs> well, I tell you, Archie, marriage is just like a hot bath. After a while, it ain't so hot. <laughs> Take my case, for example. Mrs. C and I were married in a beautiful little ceremony over in Ireland. In accordance with the tradition... First, I kissed the Blarney Stone, and then I kissed Mrs. Clancy. You know, the Blarney Stone had more pucker than she did. <laughs> yeah, I've met Mrs. Clancy. Pretty horrible kisser. 
<laughs> That's right. You have met her, haven't you? Yeah, but the dame I'm marrying is different. Uh, plenty of dough, uh, gorgeous figure, you know, loaded with money, beautiful eyes, loaded with dough. Just a second, Arch. You wouldn't be thinking of taking money from a woman, would you? Is there a law? <laughs> <laughs> but, Archie, that would make you a leech and a parasite. Leave us not think of me as a leech or a parasite, Clancy. Leave us just think of the dame as an art supporter. <laughs> art supporter, me. Hey, that's good. I think I sent it to Wool and Winchell. <laughs> Reminded me to do that, will you, Eddie? Okay. Uh, by the way, this telegram just arrived for you. A telegram for me? Let's see. Hey. It's from Millicent. She says yes. She's going to marry me. She's on her way down here. Oh, congratulations, Archie. Well, thanks, Finnegan. Congratulations, Miss Archie. Thank you, Eddie. Condolences, Archie. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Clancy. I, I'm only kidding. Marriage is a fine institution. And underneath it all, I think Mrs. Clancy is the salt of the earth. I only wish I could shake her. <laughs> well, good luck to you, me boy. Archie, may I offer my congratulations? Well, thank you, Joe. And I'd like to give you this little bottle as a wedding present. You think I should be hitting a bottle so soon after I get married? <laughs> but you didn't look at it. It's a bottle of Vitalis. And Vitalis means, well, groomed hair. Do you get it? Not yet. Feed it to me slow. <laughs> Don't you see? If you use Vitalis, your hair will look... Well, I mean, you'll be a well-haired groom. Joe, is your last name Miller? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm not so good with the jokes, Arch, but you've got to admit that what I say is true. Vitalis is perfect for well-groomed hair, and it's particularly good if you're troubled with dry, unruly hair, hair that's been dried out by sun, wind, and water. Why, no other hair preparation can give your scalp and hair better protection than Vitalis and the 60-second workout. For the Vitalis formula contains two of the same ingredients that many skin specialists prescribe for dry, flaky scalps, plus all the other extras that make your hair more handsome, more healthy-looking. So try the Vitalis 60-second workout. Let it prevent scalp and hair dryness, rout flaky dandruff, and give you the best-looking, healthiest-looking head of hair you ever had. Look your best tomorrow if you get a bottle of Vitalis today. Uh, what are you doing there, Archie? Uh, studying over these travel folders, Miss Duffy. I'm trying to figure out where to go on me honeymoon now. No port, Palm Springs. Palm Springs, that might not be bad. I hear they get some pretty nice-looking dames down there. Yeah, they'll come in handy on your honeymoon. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, let's see. Bermuda, Cuba, Nassau. How about Lithuania? <laughs> Why Lithuania? What's wrong with Lithuania? Nothing. Okay. Well, that settles that. <laughs> Now, where else could we go? Miami, Monte Carlo. Why would anybody want to go to Lithuania? Katrinka Yabak comes from Lithuania. So what? Katrinka's a very nice girl. Well, so is Millicent a very nice girl, and Millicent's the one I'm going on my honeymoon with. Well, okay, then. Okay. Go anywhere you want. That's just what I'm going to do. I still think you ought to go to Lithuania. Well, I think you should go someplace. <clears throat> uh, let's look over this folder here, Eddie. Honolulu, just overnight from Los Angeles by Pan American Airways, only 338 round trip, including sleeper. Eddie, remind me to pack me sheer black pajamas. Hmm? <laughs> uh, don't bother me now, Finn. And the dame I'm going to marry me, future Sprouse, is going to be here any minute, and we got to get busy. We ain't even shoveled an aisle through the sawdust yet. You mean you're going to have the wedding here? Why not? People get married over the radio, they get married in theaters, and airplanes. That's right, Arch. I even heard about a couple getting married in a church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Now, let's see. i got to get the ring... And the minister, the uh, carnations for the ushers. Uh... Well, how about orange blossoms for the bride? Uh, let's not spoil her, Eddie. Just whip up a couple of martinis. <laughs> now, 
let's see. I'll need striped pants and a castaway coat and... Uh, <laughs> uh, I've got to make reservations for a trip through the tunnel of love. <laughs> now, what else? Uh, uh, what kind of music are you going to have at the wedding, Archie? Well, we're going to have organ music, of course. Organ, huh? Well, that's nice. Who's going to pass the tin cup, you? <laughs> Frustrated humor, if I ever heard it. <laughs> Miss Duffy, this ain't gonna be no hurdy-gurdy organ. It's gonna be a beautiful pipe organ playing the wedding march. Hmm. I'll bet you wouldn't even know which wedding march to play. Well, how many wedding marches is there? There's two. Lohengrin's and Mendelssohn's. And which one do you like best? Well, Mendelssohn has always been my favorite. And I'll bet you was his, too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one we're gonna play. Eh, what a dopey wedding. What did you say? I think I made myself plain. No, Mother Nature took care of that. <laughs> now, look, Miss Duffy, please, don't leave us argue on me wedding night. Uh... Uh, Miss Archie, if this wedding is going to take place tonight, don't you think you ought to rehearse it a little? A uh, good idea, Eddie. Uh, yeah, who could be the preacher? I'll do it. Uh, good. Uh, now, who could be the bride? How about me? Not even by proxy. <laughs> Let's see, who could be the bride? Uh, Jay Arch. There's my girl. <laughs> Finnegan, how would you like to be me bride? Okay, Art, but first I think we'd better get me mother's consent. <laughs> no, it's only make-believe. Now, here, uh, hold me hand. Hold your hand? Yeah, okay. okay. Now, uh, start the ceremony, Eddie. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here... Uh, just a minute, Eddie. Uh, what's the matter, Finnegan? Can't you stand still? Well, I'm nervous, Art. This is a big step in me life. <laughs> Worries me. Suppose we ain't compatible. Well, if we ain't, we'll just shake hands like little gentlemen and call it off. <laughs> now go ahead, Eddie. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here together. Uh, uh, just a second. Not that I want to butt in, but don't you think the bride should have on something old and something new? Hey, this is one time she's right. Finnegan, uh, you got on anything that's old? Yeah, me pants. Uh, what about something new? The patches. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess that'll cover it. <laughs> All right, proceed ahead, Eddie. Uh... Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here together. Well, I, I can't go through with it. What's the matter? I feel silly marrying you. Why? Well, you're so much taller than I am. <laughs> Would the bride please keep a trap shut? <laughs> now, come on. Let's get this over with. Do you, Mr. Archer, take Miss Millicent to be your lawful wedded wife? Miss Millicent? Yeah. So already you got another woman, huh? <laughs> And, and there ain't no other woman. That's just an example, a, a metaphor. I don't care what your metaphor. Get her out of my house. <laughs> Maybe we better make it so he can understand it. Uh, call the bride Finnegan. Okay. Do you, Miss Finnegan, take Mr. Archer to be your lawful wedded husband? Do I? What? Huh? Do I? Finnegan, it's I do. Okay, then you marry him. <laughs> This ain't a real wedding. It's only kind of, uh, you know, mock believe. Uh, now, try it again, Eddie. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here together. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, hey, who's that dame that just come in the door there? Better go over and see what she wants, Eddie. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> the preacher has to go wait on a customer. <laughs> what a place for a wedding. Miss Duffy, to me and me bride, this place will be the little church around the corner. Don't forget, to people in love, things only seem to be what they are. <laughs> and Miss Archie, guess what? What? That girl that just come in is your bride to be. You mean that is Millicent? That gorgeous hunk of punkritude? That's right. <laughs> She's beautiful. Hubba, hubba. Pardon me, uh, are you really Millicent? That's right. <laughs> Yeah, you're watching. 
Miss Van Schnook, would you mind to repeat that? Yeah, you watch it. Finnegan, is there any limbs missing from your family tree? <laughs> Uh, well, are you right, you Archie? Why? Well, if you are, I'm your little Millie. <laughs> Millie, I got sad news for you. Archie just left town. He went back to his wife and his 12 children. Gee, I've been tilted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're better off, Miss Van Schnook. That Archie was never no good anyhow. You know, he's a cheat and a crook and a no-good bum. Uh, tell her about him, Eddie. No, go on. You know the facts better than me. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, well, I guess I'll just have to go back home and try me luck again. Uh, don't leave, Millie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're kind of cute. Uh, say, you're pretty cute, too. Uh, I think we got something in common. <laughs> I wonder what it could be. <laughs> hey, I got it. Do, do you like Tootsie Rolls? Yeah, I love them. I'll bet that's what it is. <laughs> uh, what do you say we go down to the candy store and split one? Uh, can I trust you? Well, sure you can trust me. I'll divide it even. <laughs> Okay, it's a deal. So long, everybody. So long, everybody. Well, so long, you lucky couple. I hope you will always be happy together. And if you have any children, name them after uh, the Gargantua. <laughs> yes, it's a hit. Thousands of men have switched to new Benex brushless shave cream. Thousands are discovering that Benex gives them the best shaves they've ever had. Mister, it's time you too tried Benex, the new wonder shave with a sensational beard softening formula. Benex brushless leaves your face feeling extra smooth and comfortable. And Benex doesn't clog your razor or drain. Just try Benex yourself. Get a tube at your nearest drug counter. Or we'll send you a big 25 cent tube free. Write your name and address on a postcard. And mail to Benex, B-E-N-E-X, Empire State Building, New York 1, New York. Only one tube to a customer. Remember, buy Benex brushless or get a big 25-cent tube free by writing Benex, Empire State Building, New York. Hurry, offer expires May 1st. Duffy, next week, uh, Charles Coburn. Well, he's uh, sort of an old Jolson. Yeah, yeah, the only difference between Jolson and Coburn is that when Jolson gets down on one knee, there's a chance that he'll be proposing to a dame. <laughs> well, anyway, Coburn will be here next week, Duffy. Uh, be sure to listen in, huh? Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Time now to leave Duffy's Tavern for this evening, but let's meet here again at the same time next Wednesday when our guest will be Charles Coburn. Duffy's Tavern is brought to you by Ipana Toothpaste for the smile of beauty and by Talis for well-groomed hair. Each Wednesday, Bristol Myers brings you Duffy's Tavern and Mr. District Attorney, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.